Good evening. Good evening and welcome. I'm Pamela Erlin. I'm a trance channel, medium, and clear conscious channel. If you don't know my work, nice to meet you. Today we'll be channeling Princess Diana. I've been working with her spirit for quite a few years. Again, the first time I've asked, I believe that I've explained this to many of you that um, I asked um, in mid-2016 and she said, you're not ready. I asked again um, and he said, it's bad timing, particularly after the queen's passing. Um, I asked again after um, the marriage of Harry and Meghan and she said, not yet, but soon. Um, and then very recently I asked again and she finally said yes. So I'm going to be going into a bit of a trance as trance channels often do. And then I'm going to have Anya field her the questions that you've given. Um, and the ones, if you don't find your questions in um, the lineup, it's only because she denied them, not me as the channel, please know that. And the ones, the questions that you fielded that she did want, um, those are there um, and we will be asking them. <clears throat> we do have the comments open, but not live chat. We do typically have live chat open, but we won't today. We just really want to stay clear and not be distracted. Um, we, we do have the comments open. If you have any questions or comments, please like and subscribe if you enjoy my work with her. Um, and um, we will be deleting and uh, any comments that are really inappropriate or lacking the grace and reverence that's, that this being brings, which is quite a lot of grace and reverence. So I hope that you are and will be enjoying her presence as much as I am and have been. And I look forward to whatever she brings to us and I know that it'll be beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go into trance, I'll see you soon. Hello. Hi. My name is Anya. My name is Diana. Thank you for being here with us today. We have some questions that we would like to ask. Is that okay? Of course. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the first question we have is, what aspects of your life did you enjoy most? What brought you the most joy? Hmm. A mother would never question that it's always her children, the light and the joy of bringing them into this world and then spending every moment of time with them that I could possibly has brought me nothing but pride, joy, and has been the biggest component of my happiness that I could share with you. Any parent would guarantee that the light of a child could grace the path of any heartfelt human and humble the path of anyone 
who has forgotten their heart. Thank you. Could you tell us how becoming a mother changed your mindset and changed your life? Mm -hmm. The very unusual circumstances which I have been brought into the family at the time brought joy and then sadness, honor and then grief in that order. And bringing my children into this world was my life-saving grace. They truly saved my life. Thank you. What transpired in your life for you to be drawn to and travel to Africa to work? I'll be honest with you. In the first moments of just the sheer comparison between my life and theirs, how could I not be drawn? The first moment I laid eyes upon the pain of the children and the joy was the moment I knew that my entire life would be devoted to them. And that hasn't stopped, not in my human life, nor in spirit. You see, again, the sheer comparison of most of our worlds and theirs was a deep cry in my heart for a reconstruction of equality, for a deep remembrance of truth as shown through the lives of Africa, as shown through the animals upon the lands, as shown through the sheer contrast of our royal dignity, if you could deem it as such, in comparison again to the dignity of the children walking barefoot upon the lands. You say they struggle and I say yes when they are hungry, when you have food upon your table and I and all of the families within the monarchy, when each and every moment of sheer will that they bring to us is a ray of light amidst the world's darkness. They know happiness more than I or any privileged being could ever. And my heart is still there. Thank you for your answer. What words of wisdom do you have for those who seek happiness in their lives? Why has happiness become the pillar of strength for every seeking human heart? Why is happiness the goal? Would you believe me if I explained to you that my goal was not happiness as evidenced by my path? My goal was not happiness. My goal was empowerment. My goal was acceptance. My goal was equality. My goal wasn't peace. That can never be had here. My goal wasn't meekness. It was the power of humility. For those who seek happiness, dare I advise you, please consider that acceptance of every heartfelt state upon which you could endeavor 
would be the key to unlocking steps of grace that extend from the heavens above, that permeate your heart and unlock you every emotional state that shall fall upon you if honored and accepted in such grace and humility will empower you further into your unique color and flavor of happiness. You see that? Thank you. We have someone who asks, during your life, did you have to keep your spirituality hidden? And how did it help you to navigate through your life? I sigh not because it's a difficult question. It's obvious that perhaps that would be the case. Is it more important to you that this part of me was not exposed to you or... Is it more important to you that spirituality simply means loving and accepting yourself as an equal being with equal rights? Is it more important to you that spirituality be hidden or honored? It was important to me for spirituality to be not necessarily invisible as if it should be something I am ashamed of, but rather a candle lit inside of me, protected by the winds, the friends around me, shielded me from judgment of such candle, or perhaps even if you were to blow it out. In my weakest moments, that candle was still lit and shielded by you, my friends. That candle was shielded by your words of support, your smiles, your embraces. That candle in my heart was shielded when I held the hands of the dying and when they looked into my eyes and met me with grace and honor as an equal human being, that candle is still lit today with you and for you. And it was always about you, not me. Spirituality is an essence, not an action. If you endeavor to take actions to become a spiritual being, the mind will cloud your candle as opposed to shielding it. If you endeavor to serve, simply to light others up, your candle will stay alight. Thank you for that beautiful answer. What advice would you have for those that struggle with mental health? I can't deny that it wasn't a struggle for myself. That is for sure. I can claim that throughout that darkness, there were many times that I could have allowed the world to control me, to manipulate me, to tell me what to think, what to feel, what to speak, what to do. But there was a strength inside of me, and you have it too. There is a strength inside of you, resilient, untarnished, untouched by the world, untainted, unembellished. I got it from you. You lit my candle, and I lit yours. The truth about mental illness is that no one can go it alone. It's not understanding that you seek. It is connection. It's 
It's not understanding that would heal it. It's not time that heals it. Consciousness is the greatest healer. It wasn't a word I used often. Certainly wasn't a word I went around uttering about in the royal court. But consciousness is the light inside of the soul that is there no matter what. It pushes you forward and tells you to connect to people. It drives you forward and beckons you in your darkest nights. Consciousness lights the way inside of the mind, down the dark corridors, into the heart. But let me tell you something more practical about this. You see, depression requires action. The only thing that could keep the candle of my soul lit from the darkness in my mind was action, movement, and compassion. The action is the service. You must serve others and complete the cycle of life for which you were born. I wasn't born for royalty. I was born for you. You light that candle and I keep it alit by your energy and then I return it to you. And that is how it has always been. You see, mental illness requires the service to keep that candle lit, serve someone, even when your mind tells you that you can't. Serve someone, even when your body tells you that you can't. Serve someone, anyone, deserving or undeserving, matters not. Service lights the way to healing. Secondly, you must move. You must exercise even when your body screams in pain. If you can only move your body an inch, do so. Perhaps tomorrow it will be two inches that you move or stretch. The body needs nature. It needs light. And it needs you. We need each other. Dare I say that that action becomes sacred to you, that that action lights the way for others more than it does thyself, and then it returns to the self, and the cycle is complete. A mind becomes ill merely because of the lack of connection, and if you forge the way forward and find it, the light will resume itself in the act of service, in the act of consciousness, in the continual act of connecting to others, this light will shine. Thank you for that answer. That was beautiful. Uh, We have another question. If you did not become the Princess of Wales, what would you have liked to have done as a chosen profession? Dancing. It would most certainly be dancing. And that's one thing, but maybe I would have many. Do I have to choose? (laughs) Tell us all of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, dancing lights me from the inside and it extends out. It allowed me to effectually move anger from my core so that it did not disease my mind further. It allowed me to beat so many illnesses internally. It allowed me to keep that candle lit for you and you for me. And then it was we lighting the candle for others in the world who are in need. It allowed me to hold a space for the dying. It allowed me to continue to find my voice I would say also 
I would continue to work in the nonprofit sectors throughout the world, and I would create many and run them as I was in the journey towards effectuating that purpose in my final days. And I was so happy and honored that my life was moving in this direction. I would say any career that involved the act of service would always be a first choice and dance, dancing would be an equal second if not half and half if we shall like an american tea wait that's a terrible metaphor i don't like american tea <laughs> that's a beautiful answer thank you so much um could you um as you worked with so many that were unwell uh foot in focused on aids and hiv what are your thoughts about disease in our life? When I was younger, did you know that it used to break my heart to proceed into the children's hospital? And I worked with a doctor there for quite some time and I was a regular. However, what broke my heart more than seeing a child suffer is observing an adult ignore them. What broke me into pieces and caused me to face my deepest weaknesses was observing my country's indifference, but not just mine. Everywhere, all human indifference when privilege is involved is heartbreaking. If you see an illness, whether it is visible to you or whether it was invisible like mine, it is a call for help. I called for help many times and my voice was silenced. My voice was silenced over my desire to touch the untouchable, to reach the unreachable, and to shine a light, if even for a moment, disease is an opportunity for you to touch someone and for they to touch your heart and your life. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, we do have a number of questions and if at any stage you don't want to answer them, please just let me know and we can pass it over. So from a spiritual perspective, do you feel the crown and the royal establishment should be dissolved? Mm, way to put me on the spot. <laughs> <sighs> there are, and this answer may surprise you considering all that I have endured. There are a number of reasons for a monarchy to be in existence. The respect involved in continuing this lineage is no longer present to uphold it. It's not the same now as it was when it began, yet it is a life force for the soul of my country, and it should be honoured for those who wish to honour it. Again, it is changing. It is ever-changing. And with the introduction of fresh young lineage to begin to shift the old into the new, the rigid into the flowing. We're going to shift the feminine from the meek to the strong. And we're going to infuse the grace of femininity into the masculine. There are many who seek to continue the tradition. And you will not understand this unless it courses through your veins. And then there are just as many who wish for its departure. Yet, this is the consciousness of hundreds of years, if not thousands, 
of years for some to remember ancient times, but to also disembowel the painful old ways while bringing in the new. Every country needs law. Every country needs order. I am a heartfelt woman, not a political one. But I must say, if you're allowed to run it on your own, what will you do with it? You can't tear down one system if you have not another to replace it. And you are straight in the middle of that. You are the new consciousness that is birthing that. Mm, I beg your pardon. So I won't stand before you today and say abolish the monarchy. I will say change it. I will say don't take someone's ways and cultures away from them. I would say heal it. I would say uphold it in the greatest reverence while tearing down its old foundation of pain, the horrors and the atrocities taken upon this and all of the suffering will be healed in time. I am not for it and I am not against it. I am against you, the rowing out, the love, the reverence, the joy that created a foundation and a pillar of reverence. But I am also against you allowing yourself to be controlled by its terror. I am for you helping by sharing the power of your voices individually and together. <clears throat> I am for you tearing down the old ways, but also remembering that you must build your own system and that there must be one to guide you. You need a new system, but it isn't here yet. What will you do? It's in your hands now, and I am with you every step of the way. I help pave your path. Thank you for that answer. I have another question here. Now that you are in spirit, has your soul determined any particular reason that you had married into the royal family? Hmm. Hmm. I spent many a dreadful hour asking that same question, my friends. And now, from the vantage point of my spirit self, I can say that you needed me and I honoured that call. I can say that I was the beginning of a foundation of tearing down the horrors and atrocity. And you and my children and my grandchildren will rebuild and create a new system. <coughs> Excuse us, the body's struggling. How's the channel doing? <coughs> <coughs> Trancing is tedious. <laughs> um, thank you for that answer. Um, so following up from that, what are the best attributes that you believe you've passed on to your children? Oh, don't ask me, but perhaps ask them, because that would be uh, the ultimate truth. And I will tell you what I have hoped to pass down to William. I hope to pass down discernment, the balance of power between matriarchy and patriarchy. I would hope to pass down trust, but only when an enlightened path is invigorated by truth. I would hope to pass down a unique trait of becoming a visionary 
To William I know that I have passed down great fortitude. To William I know that I have passed down great wisdom, not from myself, but from observing the spirit of discernment through the grace of sacred action. William knows when to speak and he knows the perfect timing of when to remain in silence. William knows when to stand in his power and when to wait on the appropriate time for his light to shine. And in his journey as a future king, which I am positive 100% that this will transpire in its perfect moment of time, my spirit speaks to him and guides him always. My spirit speaks to him in his dreaming. My spirit speaks to him in his waking moments. <clears throat> and my spirit will never be silenced. To Harry, I had hopes to pass down compassion, discernment, and empowerment, sovereignty. I know that Harry has a gentle, nurturing heart of compassion, that he will be one to continue my legacy in deep service to the children of this earth, to their educational systems. And I know that Harry will begin to trust his own discernment in the appropriate time for the growth of his power, for his voice to be more heard in not just political matters, but in personal ones, in matters of the heart. Thank you. Um, this is a proper question, so I'll just pose it. <laughs> What are your thoughts on the Netflix series just released on Harry and Meghan? Mm -hmm. It was time. Um, I'm certain that there were many great atrocities that led to this choice. I am also certain that in his heart, that he likely wished for a better timing for this or perhaps for it not to have to happen at all. And I am certain that he is aware that in a certain sense, as uncomfortable as it may be, it was the best timing. I am certain that that Harry has a unique path of grace to bestow upon this world and that in the journey of grace that he embodies, he will continue in my legacy and create his own. You see, I've never wished for my children to merely hold my candles, but to burn their own. And now speaking of burning, he is certainly doing that and paving a new path, a fiery one, burning down many older, unnecessary institutions. And he is also troubled about this choice. I can see in his heart that it took great amount of timing, great amount of mulling this through his mind and prayer and conversations with the Duchess. This was not an easy choice. I can't watch TV from heaven, but I can say that this was precisely the controversy that was needed to help my child embrace his own sovereignty 
The consequences, however, are concerning as a mother. And I'm going to give you the other side of this equation. You have half of the world looking upon he and Megan as if they are monsters. And then you have the other half looking upon them as if they are saviors. They are neither. They aren't wishing to be a model that breaks a system, but a model that invigorates a new one and still upholds an old one. And many may not like that. Many may not like to see that you are very divided and what you wish for these leaders to portray and what path you wish for them to pay for you. And as long as you are divided, their path continues to be cut off. Are you going to join them? If you are, you can't join them from one side of the path and not the other. You can't join them as loyalist or as freedom mongers. You have to see something in the middle if you wish to help them pave a way for a new system built upon freedom, compassion, and truth. You are too divided to see where my child is endeavoring to take you. This is not a beat them or join them situation. We know that half of you love the monarchy, but it needs more freedom. We know that half of you wish to tear it down, but it's there for a reason. Because you have not paved a new path to lead yourselves. I know that that likely wasn't the answer that you wanted today. But this series is here to reach the world until you no longer divide yourselves. This is the whole purpose. You may say, some of you on one side of the fence will throw stones at Megan. Others of you will throw stones at the monarchy instead but that's not what it's about. You are only seeing the surface. You are only seeing the beginning of their plans on this planet together. I don't wish for you to back me into a corner, to force me to say that I love this series or that I hate it because I am not capable of bias. However, I am capable of helping you change and I am that voice of your change. I will forever be that voice of your change as long as you recollect this legacy, this light that I leave you today and always. I am there in spirit by Harry. I am there in spirit by Megan. I support them. And I whisper in their ears when they are making the wrong choices. And this series has its own purpose. It isn't about whether I like it or not. It paves its own path for you. And this isn't about whether you like Megan and whether she's here to tear down the monarchy or whether you support Harry as if you're going to pull the couple apart. You are not seeing the relevance of their goals. My greatest hope is that you understand my answer and that you understand that this series is paving a path of truth, of awareness, of a new world consciousness that is unlike anything that has ever been shown or portrayed on your planet. And we must respect that. We must respect them 
and not divide them. And we must place our personal beliefs aside. Only they know their reasons. But consider the shift of matriarchal sovereignty that is breaking, the shift of patriarchal sovereignty that is shifting as well. Consider its timing. You can ask me as many more questions as you wish about that. You can ask me anything about things that they've stated in the series and things that I would agree with and things that I don't, but ultimately speaking, does it matter? What matters is the sovereignty, the freedom, the awareness of truth that they present to you, whether you like it or not. And whether I like it or not, I will always stand by my child. Thank you. Excellent answer. I like that. Um, the next question we have is, how do you feel about Charles being king and not advocating mm. to William as some thought would happen? Hmm. You want what you want before it's time for it to happen. <laughs> you see, you thought I would say I hated him. I understand that he is a victim of the system. I was a victim of the pain that he caused. And he was a victim of the system of pain embedded into his heart. You thought I would say that it shouldn't be and that he should just give that pain to my child? I beg your pardon. I would suggest to William to take upon that honor and shift this monarchy, but not until the moment comes. Enjoy, Kate. Enjoy her. Enjoy my beautiful grandchildren. Enjoy your time. Be married happily, for you may be perhaps the last couple that is left to be married happily. Would that alone not shift a system? You are one of the few that are genuinely, authentically, adoringly in love with each other. And the world can see it. I was beyond thrilled for your choice. I am beyond thrilled that Kate may one day also lead the world, if that is the case. And I would be beyond thrilled when it is appropriate in timing that my son will take over this. But at the same time, it is a relentless burden to carry. And who would want their child to carry it too soon? Give Charles his time in the limelight. Give it to him. Why not? He didn't have it around me. And now he gets to have it. Charles has a heart for the environment. Charles has a heart for the planets on this land. Charles has a heart for things. And amidst your judgment of him for the pain endured by me from him, you have not fully seen his potential. Give him his moment for he is changing rapidly by the moment. Give him his time. It is due him. Thank you so much for that answer. Can you tell us your feelings on the marriage of Charles and Camilla? I don't know how quite to answer that because 
on one hand, this is something that should have happened. And on the other hand, had that happened and had he not married me, we would not have our beautiful, beautiful children that we have today. And I have forgiven the deep indiscretions caused by my husband. We held many conversations prior to my passing and we became cordial friends. <laughs> Not exactly endearing friends, mind you, but friends who could have tea and share goals for their children and for once smile and laugh. We had such brief moments of that in our marriage and it was because he was unable to marry the woman that he deeply loved. I hold no grievance towards Camilla. I thought I would never say that. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> I hold no grievance for Camilla. And finally, I hold no grievance for Charles, although we would toss about our grievances over a cup of tea many times prior to my passing. And I'm happy that the two things that he wanted will finally happen. And dare I say, there are many times when he felt that taking upon the honor, the duty, the respect and the burden of the crown was something that he would have rather died than do. So give it to him, let him have what he thought he wanted and then realize that he never wanted and now realizes that he must take upon such duty to spare his children it for if, if even a brief time. He does and doesn't want it, but out of honor and to spare William, he will do it. He will not advocate. And I would haunt him indefinitely if he did. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> Thank you so much for that answer. Um, could you describe what it was about your essence as Diana that touched so many hearts all over the world? I had hopes to embody normalcy, not the circus that you saw surrounding me. I had hopes to show you someone, albeit if I would be the only one at that time to be unafraid to touch you, to meet your gaze, to meet you equally. I wished for you to be seen. When you saw me, it was only because I was seeing you and we met each other. We met each other in equality and love. And for that reason, I would pray daily to embody grace. And I would not pray to a religious service, but I would cry for you. And I cried with you. And you cried for me. And you cried and grieved for me and with me. I gave you permission, permission of the grace of acceptance, permission to speak your voice of truth and power and equality. <clears throat> and I gave you permission to connect to me that nothing was unreachable, not even a royal. I gave you permission because you gave it to me. Thank you. 
Um, we have another question here. It says you mostly seem shy, quiet and reserved and sometimes sad. And um, was that an accurate translation of your true personality? What was your level of happiness? Mm. I suppose that's fair enough. <laughs> um, you saw me through many decades of authentic emotional expression. And that was my gift to you. Happiness isn't the goal. I'll say it again. Happiness was never my goal. Expression was my goal. Grace was the candle that you lit inside of me. You gave me that strength, the permission to be shy, the permission to be reserved, the permission to be empowered when needed and quiet when overwhelmed, to grieve openly, to cry, to be angry. My personality embodied all of the above. I was sad because I felt unseen and unheard until you met me. You were my fuel, you were my strength. There is no one word to embody my personality because I am a reflection of my people. You would call me the people's princess. <laughs> and that was for the moment when the monarchy held my soul, trapped as a bird in a steel-walled cage. And you opened the door when my wings were broken, your love or the bandages upon them. I didn't fly out of the cage. I hobbled out of it, frightened, afraid, vulnerable, and free. And I hobbled around while you lifted me into the sky and reminded me of my power. And then I flew. When my voice was voiceless, your supportive sentiments of love and grace carried me. My personality was always a reflection of the compassion that you are. Thank you for that. Um, how can we hold our dignity in the newfound chaos in the world? Mm. Whoever told you you need that? <laughs> so many stuffy people around me consider dignity to be honour. What was the phrase that they used to say to all of the kings in the making? They would rather die than lose their honour. But when you equate dignity with honour, you place the soul back into the steel caged bars. You place the soul back into a prison and then you call that sovereign. Don't worry about that word, my friends. The greatest dignity is the honor of being yourself. The freedom of allowing your personal voice to express. The return and remembrance of such power. Well, as you know, I didn't get that from being royal. I got it from being common. I got it from being an equal to you and you to I. 
and you lifted me up more than I can ever express to you. And I thank you. Thank you. Um, how can we better see the good in everyone as you did? Are you alluding to an opinion that I always saw good? <laughs> I think somebody is. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I'm not a perfect princess. Go ask Charles if you may, albeit his opinion has been expressed many times over. <laughs> um, I'm a princess who's known to be fiery, passionate, full of waterworks. I'm a princess, I am a, a queen and a princess and a commoner who holds an opinion of both wealth and lack. I'm a queen and a princess and a commoner in your hearts. I don't seek to see only good. I seek to bring love to everything that you have deemed bad. I seek to bring compassion to everything that the world has deemed unredeemable. I seek to bring a gentle touch to everyone who has been judged untouchable. It's not that I didn't see horrific things, especially in the walls of my own prison, but it was up to me not to fight, but to allow my light to shine not brighter than you, not for you, but with you. It was up to me to choose to connect. It was up to me to speak out, even when my voice trembled. And again, you were the fuel for that. When I couldn't eat, you were my food. When I couldn't cry, you are my tears. I would say when I couldn't shout, but there was never quite a time. <laughs> but when I needed peace, the public was my convert. Thank you for that. Can you give us advice on how to cope with not fitting in and not belonging? Mm. At this stage in the journey, you don't cope with it. You rise above it. Why attempt to belong where you don't fit? It's one of the few regrets that I do have when my heart said you don't fit, the soul said you don't. So what? There's another reason why you're doing this. There's another reason why to marry someone that undoubtedly does not love you. There's another reason that's graceful behind and beyond your comprehension. There's another reason that it's perhaps only up to God to truly know. Sometimes there are situations and circumstances that feel as if they cannot be redeemed, as if they cannot be forgiven. So how would fitting in correct that? How would belonging be beneficial in that circumstance? And that's just one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that there are times when you need to belong. You need to belong and you need to continue to try 
to seek souls that understand you, that see you, that love you, that support you. And you will find them unless you are too busy fretting that you never will and that you will never belong. There is that moment as well to consider that in my era, it was an era where many didn't belong. In your era, it's an epoch during which you must belong. You must find those with whom you belong. For me, that was with you, all of you. Thank you for your answer. Um, what do children need most in our times that we can address on a personal level? They need their mothers. And when they can't have it, they need someone with a heart of compassion to step in and mother them. They need connection. They need to be provided with a home that is safe. They need to be provided, not strictly with material safety, but with emotional safety. They need to be exposed to truths while also comforted by a friends and supported family. There are so many needs that children have, but most of all, they need love, they need hugs, they need permission to be themselves and they need permission to find their voice and to speak it safely and to not only be able to speak it safely but to be rewarded for speaking it, to be seen and to be understood when they speak. They need patience. They need mercy. They need tolerance. And they need grace. Thank you. Uh, how is the channel doing at this time? Are we okay for some more questions? Perhaps. We shall see. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get going then. Um, what are your hopes for the new young family stepping into the Prince and Princess of Wales position at this time? Mm, I'm so proud of them. I'm so honoured to see my son step into his fullest potential. He will be the one to change a very old system and it is the time for a much needed change for he and his wife and my beautiful grandchildren. My greatest hopes is to continue in an authentically happy marriage. I already know that that will always be the case. My greatest hopes is to continue to raise their children in a loving home with emotional safety. <clears throat> My greatest hopes, as I watch them observe Kate and all of her charities, and I observe the mother that she is becoming and the beautiful wife that she already is, I have hopes, and they may be grand hopes, but I hope for them to change not just the monarchy, but the world. I hope that everyone can see the truth in their hearts, the peace that they bring and represent. <coughs> and I hope that William begins to speak his voice loudly, clearly, powerfully, relentlessly and I hope that he will be the best king 
that could have possibly ever existed. And I am not ashamed of that hope because I believe that by the time his father grants him this title, no matter how long that takes, not due to advocacy, not due to stepping down, but at some point when Charles meets his spirit <coughs> and he shares his desire to pass his throne to Will, that perhaps the world will have changed and the monarchy will follow along with that change. Not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, we will maintain reverence. Yet the sovereignty will now be with the people. And that is how he will rule. He will rule with you. He will not rule. He will govern with you. Those are my hopes. And they may be grand. But I believe in him. More than I have believed in anything. I believe in my children. And their capacity to change this world. Thank you. I love that answer. I have a question here. How is your mother-in-law doing in spirit? And have you talked to her? <sighs> of course. <coughs> Excuse me. The body suffers. We'll just take a couple of more questions and then we'll... No, she wishes for you to continue Does on. She okay. <laughs> She'll suffer later, she says. <laughs> Go back to your mother-in-law. Would you believe me when I say that she has tea and crumpets every single day in spirit? <laughs> that her spirit has not actually left the house. <laughs> okay. You know, that's what we called it, right? The house. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> wasn't the big castle <sighs> it wasn't the palace her spirit has not left she opens a red box every single day still <laughs> okay she has tea at the same time <laughs> with biscuits <clears throat> one side breaded and one side not <laughs> jam even though I know not because she never eats it <laughs> And um, there was um, one of her favorite, um, uh, they used to call them something, but my memory has failed in this longer amount of time that I've been in spirit. But the people serving her, one was passing shortly after she had left form and she spends more time with her than she does me. <laughs> <clears throat> Granted, we are still the best of friends, and sometimes I visit her and have tea in, in, in the palace. <laughs> but she doesn't want me to, um, to intrude upon her. I still have to call upon her through her, through her helper. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you believe also that um, she watches over Charles, her spirit, watches over him perpetually? and will always do so. She um, would prefer to maintain the grounds of Buckingham for as long as her soul uh, persists in this endeavor. I'm not quite certain. Uh, yes, it's just like her. <laughs> Why doesn't she want to move on? Or why does she stay around the palace? It was her greatest love, and she would yeah. always say to me, Diana, if this is my ship, when it is rising, I am at its helm, and if it is sinking, I am with it at the bottom. <laughs> cool. um, thank you for that answer. Of course. I have another question here. Why did you choose now to speak with us? Mm, it was time. 
for any of you who haven't been under a rock, the Queen passed. <clears throat> I'm still with you, as always. And now we have patterns of unhappiness that are broken. Harry and Meghan, in particular, choose happiness at any cost, even at great cost of their own. It won't be so easy for Harry to continue his familiar relationships. <clears throat> but what's important is his relationship with his brother and his relationship with my grandchildren and that they continue as cousins to relate to each other and they do and they always will and nothing will stop that and his brother has made that pact and promise to him and it will not be broken thank you i like that answer now is the time you see for great change and I was getting around to this rather slowly because the energy here in the body is fading, but as Harry's making these changes, there's another positive change as well. William and Kate are exceedingly happy, glowing, adoringly supportive of both their children and themselves. This needs to be seen. This needs to be remembered. This needs to be discussed. There are some people you see who love monarchy. It is at the bottom of their soul and the top of it and all over the middle. Like a pie, they must have all of it, not just a slice. Right? That's the nature of monarchy, but in the nature of the people, they are fed by it. There are many people in my country who are fed by the resilience, the strength, the honour, and just as many people who aren't. And that is a personal choice. The monarchy is changing and shifting into a republic of the people. And if this takes the entire lifespan of both of my children and their grandchildren, mark my words, in my grandchildren's lifetimes, it will happen because you change. And as the people change, this is how it always goes, the people change and the monarchy must abide. You think you follow them, but they must follow your popular support and opinion. And if they don't, that would be a disaster. So believe me, you are changing and they may not like it, but they will follow you and they will change for you. This is why I needed to speak to you today because you're pitted against each other. Half of you are for the monarchy with shaking fist and half of you are against it with more than shaking fist but fearful hearts. Don't let blows become bullets. Understand that change is underway. Yes, I agree with you, change is necessary but it is underway. You must be patient. You must work together. And please hear me. Watch and learn from my children. I left them the legacy of compassion, humility, fortitude, honor. They and my grandchildren will change this not just for you, but with you, because they are listening to you.
Thank you. <coughs> Are we okay for another couple of questions yet? I think so. Okay. Um, the next question is, as we move away from a powerful monarchy, our matriarchal back to a patriarchal monarchy, what advice do you have for the female royals? Mm. Speak up. Speak up. Let your voice change. Empower that palace. Shift rules and regulations. Be brave. Stand in courage. And don't be silent. Thank you. Um, how would you like us to remember you? And is there anything you'd like us to forget? <laughs> <laughs> you remember me as the people's princess. I would like for you to remember me as the queen of your hearts. And I would like to remember you always for the royalty that you are in my heart. I will honor you and I will bow before you and lift you into your power always. I know that you will never forget. My children will make sure of it. And I know that my children will light the way for a better future, not just for my country, but for the world. Thank you. Um, what advice would you have for Harry at the moment on his journey? Hmm. Am I allowed to joke? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Tell Megan that a curtsy isn't too short and isn't too long and is a simply a system of honor and nothing to be mocked. That's not a joke, but it is. I would like to also leave my love for them. I would like for them to draw upon my strength. I would like for Harry to stand out as his own leader, as his own man. I would like to tell my grandchildren as they carry on this legacy to be mindful, to create their own and that their legacy always be led by the people, for the people and with the people. I would like to always remember their smiles. I used to hold Harry and smell his head when I rocked him back and forth and babies have a unique smell. And sometimes when I come to him, when he's holding his little one, that smell on the head, he will smell it and I will be by his side saying, that's that wonderful smell. That's what you smelled like too. And that moment when he didn't like changing diapers. <laughs> and I would say, yes, I told you that would happen. <laughs> I would like to have the opportunity to speak with him regularly. I don't know how I'm going to manage that. <laughs> but I'm going to continue trying. I would like to. I know that he'll always remember me. I would like for him to always remember himself. I would like to commend Kate for all the pain that she experienced and took it in stride, but still managed to remain humble and strong without losing herself. And that was the example that I wished to leave her. And I am happy that this system did not eat her alive. 
I share my deepest apologies to Megan for the pain, the racism that she has endured. And I wish to say that It will change. I'm so proud of you. And do not break his heart. I'm quite adept at haunting. <laughs> Kidding, but not. <sighs> it's not my business to tell you how to run your marriages. The world made it their business. And I will stay out of yours. I will just say, I love you. I love you both. Harry, I'm a little concerned. And I love you. <laughs> Give your heart wholly, even when you hurt, and even when you are scared. Give it without consequence. For even if your heart is ever broken, I will always be with you. And if it is not, I will always be with you. It's not a matter of making the right choice in who you love or why or how. It is a matter that you are brave enough to do it. And if you shall ever hear this, you know I love you. Both of you. Thank you so much. Have you any final message or words that you'd like to Tell us. Be compassionate. Don't overlook the sick or the homeless. Don't make assumptions. Particularly don't make assumptions out of fear. And be the voice of change that this planet so greatly needs. I depend upon you for that now. And when you can't do it anymore, call upon my strength. I will see you. I will hear you. And I will be there. Thank you so much for answering all of our <laughs> questions today. It's been just an honour to be here with you and to help out today. Uh, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Um, can we call back the channel? Maybe, I quite like her. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. You can come back again and chat to us, maybe. <laughs> if you like. We'd love that. If you like, I would be honoured. Oh, that, so would we. Thank you. For those of you who know me, do me a favour today. Go place a white rose close as you can get to the palace. Do it for me. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this journey and um, trancing so interesting. I never remember what they say for days later, but um, I look forward to watching it back when you're watching. And if you liked connecting with her, let me know, shoot me an email or shoot me a comment. Um, please be gentle. It takes a lot of energy and um, strength to do these kind of channelings. Um, and if you like this, please subscribe, please support the channel in this way, share, let her message, um, reach other people. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for giving me the opportunity to bring her through. And, um, granted, I don't know that she's going to leave me now. <laughs> it might become a permanent thing. I feel like I've got, um, a long-term spirit guide or something because she's over here going but I'm not going anywhere <laughs> she said that. She said so anywhere. yeah she's not going anywhere <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, thank you guys. I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye. Be well.